This is Coach Rands. Thank you for joining me on the Alchemical Mindset. We're here in Roswell at the Roswell Mill, enjoying some community time with nature. It's a great place to come just hang out. If you're ever in Atlanta, Georgia, come to Roswell Mill. You can get you some good nature time, some great trails. Now, with that being said, I want to go ahead and get into this video. But I want to thank everybody for joining me, for all my subscribers, and everybody who's a member of the channel. Now, this video, we're going to talk about the fact that your prayers and your prayers to your ancestors don't work, whether it's to Jesus, Allah, God, Allah, uh, I said Allah already, uh, to Krishna, to anybody, they won't matter, don't work if you don't understand the hermetic principles of as above, so below, vibration, frequency, rhythm, cause and effect, mentalism, all those things. If you don't understand those, then your prayers are not working, and I'm going to show you why. Now, this came about to me because I was in my meditation this morning, I happened to see on Facebook, a gentleman posted uh, something to the effect, and I'll put it up right here, but he posted something to the effect of saying that woke pe he found woke people are still somewhat asleep because they're saying, somebody put another statement out that said that Jesus doesn't answer prayers, but ancestors do. And that these woke people still need to wake up. Now, I hate the fact that the term woke is really gotten out of hand. Mainstream has picked up the term, and, and now the term is, is losing what it actually meant. Because many people who are claiming to be woke are still asleep. Many people just transfer from one religion to the next religion without actually understanding who they are internally. And without understanding that you are a divine being yourself who came across as a soul that manifested the physical body here. And that the understanding of as above, so below, you have to know the full axiom to get it. Now as that spiritual being that's having a physical experience here, you have dominion over all of this. You manifest whatever is in your life. Now, I don't have a tripod, so I'm holding my hand. You manifest whatever is in your life, not someone else, not some above being doing all this work for you, not some above being causing things to happen and manifest in your life. These things happen because you decide that they're going to happen. You see, the term as above, so below actually is longer. The term goes as above, so below, so below, as above now most people like to just say as above so below so as within so without but to fully understand exactly how this vibrational pattern work of as above so below so below as above you have to recognize the important thing is the so below as above which means that the dominion of the physical plane actually creates the manifestation of what the above plane does so when you pray to Jesus, Allah, when you pray to uh, your ancestors, Oshun, Obatala, uh, your Orishas, when you pray and you know you look into Krishna and Lamiska and all these other different deities, that you give them that you're saying, well, no, it's just the above coming down to the below. No. Because your books all say something to the effect of prayers without works. It's useless, it's dead. Because if you don't do any activity here on the below plane, nothing happens, right? Nothing happens. Uh, in the Tao, it teaches that, it teaches Wu Wei Wu, doing through non-doing. So there's a water flow here, a river. Further down is more torrential. There's a story that talks about an old man who went into the river, and in this part of the river, people were dying. They couldn't escape it. But the old man somehow escaped the river downstream. Now, the reason why he was able to escape the river downstream is because he just got into the flow of the river. Instead of fighting against the river upstream like he's a salmon, he went into the flow of the river and eventually got to a part of the river where it was calm and he was able to get out. It's non-doing through doing. It's waiting while movement. I think in the Old Testament, I don't remember which book, in somewhere in Psalms, the word that it means for waiting for God actually meant awaiting while being active you see you got to have movement in order to manifest anything uh, if you saw a video I did a while back I talked about how the soul which is the combination of the masculine and the feminine energy which is why all the books from the Sumerians to the Egyptians to everyone the Christians the Buddhists talks about how that all creation starts with masculine and feminine energy well, that masculine feminine energy of the universe creates your soul. 
but through the spirit, the wind, the movement, the vibration, your soul is able to manifest on this third dimensional plane. You see, your soul can't have an existence, can't have the experience without being on this third dimensional plane. But without the action of wind, the action of movement, this is why Enlil is also the god of wind, the god of movement, of action. And Enlil becomes El, and El becomes um, Jehovah, and Yahweh, and Allah, and El becomes all those. So uh, Enlil becomes all those because he's a movement, an action. Without you understanding that, you'll never be able to manifest anything. Because you will be waiting on the stagnation of just the soul. Of just the one part of the masculine and the feminine and expecting some other vibration to manifest. Even during the Exodus, the manna may have fell and fallen from heaven, according to the story, but they had to pick it up. They had to grind it into a meal. They had to bake it into up, build ovens and bake, the, bake it into breads. They had to do actions to manifest food. You have to do this. Let me give you a couple of examples of how people misinterpret this understanding and how we are still half sleep or sleep. I also saw a post where a young lady was speaking about how she went to the doctor. Well, she was sick. She was feeling ill. So she went to the doctor. The doctor gave her some medicine, sent her home. She got, became gravely ill. Her mother, with the experience and the intuition of her mother, took action and made her go to the emergency room. When she got to the emergency room, they ran some tests, but they really couldn't figure out what was going on. So then the doctor, who had already worked over a 12-hour shift, his vibration pattern was low, and he wanted to go home. But the mother's vibrational pattern was high, and she was vibrating at a higher level, and she forced that doctor to do more tests. And before the doctor left, he said, okay, I'm going to do one more test. And you know how people are. We get white coat syndrome. And you know, the doctor say, I'm done. That's all. That's all we can do. We say, okay, the doctor knows all. And we walk away. So the doctor runs one more test. Find out what's wrong with her. Gives her the right medication. He then tells her that you may have to, because you're so ill, you may have to go home on a ventilator. You may have to go home on oxygen. Well, the medicine began to work in her body. Because the doctor, even though we got white coat syndrome and the lady believed that because the doctor said it, I'm going to have to go home on oxygen. She accepted that and believed that. And we have white coat syndrome, which means that we just, whatever the doctor says, she believed it. But the medicines in her body began to react and respond to what was going on. She didn't have to go home on medication, on, on oxygen. What did she say? She said that the doctor said that I was going to go home on oxygen. But Jesus had another line for her, another story for me. Jesus had another way. Jesus made a way. She left out all the cause and effect that occurred within her body, within her health, with the vibration of her mother, with all these different things. No praise was given to her mother for being active enough to ensure that the doctor did the other test. You see, if the doctor hadn't did the other test because of the mother, and I know some of you are going to say, well, Jesus put it in the mother to do that. You can't prove that. It's not proven. But what we do know is that the mother had experience as a mother. The lady who was sick is my age. The mother had experience. She's seen how doctors treat patients. She's seen how doctors get tired and they move on. She was determined that her daughter, was, they were going to find out what was going on with her daughter. Her determination was more powerful than the vibration of the doctor. That determination is where the praise should go. Then her body responded. Because the body is built in such a way to heal itself, it responded. That is where some of that praise should go. If she really wanted to praise Jesus, then Jesus would have never let her be sick. You know, in, in, in old Chinese ways, I don't know if it's still done today, they pay the doctor on the months that they're not sick. And on the months that they're sick, they have to pay the doctor. Because the doctor wasn't doing his job if they got sick. So they pay the doctor when they're not sick. They give the doctor praise. They give him payment, which is the equivalent to praise and prayer when, when, to your God when you're not sick. The fact that, uh, you know, I wasn't in a massive accident today. Not sick. I, I give thanks for that. I'm, pray, I'm thankful for that. Not, oh, uh, the tornado came through. It tore down five houses in my neighborhood but left my house sitting, you know, God watches over me and spare me, but he murdered and killed those other people. Those people died. Their homes died. 
that makes no sense. That's like saying I'm giving thanks to the serial killer for not killing me, but killing all my neighbors. Doesn't work that way. We have to realize that you are the manifester of your reality. And that that reality is manifested first through your lower vibration, through the so below as above. Let me give it to you in a chakra framework. We will easily say that you have to get away. If you are, if you are, if there are nine broke people and you hang around them, you're about to be number 10. Well, how is that so? If the higher as above is affecting the below, then how is the broke, then the non-broke person not affecting the broke people? Shouldn't that be how it works if it go as above, so below? But no, it goes so below as above because those nine broke, lower vibrational financial people will affect the higher vibrational financial person and then cause them to be broke. We'll tell people that you got to get away from negative people. You got to get away from low vibrational people because they'll bring you down. Wait, wait, wait. If it's as above, so below, how do the lower people bring the higher people down? And the reason is because it goes so below as above is the higher axiom. Is the actual axiom that makes the most difference. Your lower chakras, if you're living in fear, if you're living in guilt, you're living in shame, if you're living fearful of love, you will never access your third eye. You will never access your throat chakra. Your crown, king and queen, will never shine, will never be open. Because your lower chakras are affecting the higher chakras. You can't walk around as a king and call yourself a king. I'm a king, I'm a king, I'm a king, I'm a king. But because of fear, you can't build a kingdom. Because of guilt, you can't build a kingdom. Because of shame, you can't build a kingdom. You're not a king. If you can't love, you're not a king. Your crown chakra will never open. You can't claim to have vision. Your third eye is open. My third eye is open. I see things that other people can't see. Not if you're living in fear. You're just making stuff up. You just see things that just you, you intellectually can think about. You're just making it up. Your lower chakras have to be open. You have to have command and control of those lower chakras to affect the higher chakras. So you have to have command and control of your mental state, your living state, in order to affect the higher states. Your ancestors can't do jack if you ain't in command and control down here. Your God can't do jack if you're not commanding things here. Let me give you an example of that. The African slaves, the Native Americans, all prayed to their ancestors. I need freedom. These people are treating me bad. Get us free. Then they converted them over to Christians. They all praying to Jesus. Now the white colonials, the colonizers, they were praying to Jesus. But they came and took our ancestors. So who's more powerful? Is Jesus at that time frame more powerful than your ancestors? Well, it would seem so. It would seem so. Whether it was the sky people of the Hopi or it is the, uh, the, the, the Orishas of the Yoruba. Jesus seemed to be more powerful. That's what history has shown us. But whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Because in 1804... The Haitians went back to their Orishas. And the Quebec, French Quebec, French Canadians, they had Christian, they had Jesus. But the Orishas won. The Haitians won. So were the Orishas more powerful than Jesus? It would seem so. Wait, wait. The Christians wanted to invade Mongolia. But the Khans prayed to the great Khans in the sky. And they kicked the Christians out of Mongolia. They made sure they never, well, they never made it into Mongolia. They only allowed them to trade. But they never conquered Mongolia. So, is the great Khans more powerful than Jesus? Well, it would seem so. There are many battles where the Christians, like at the Alamo, they prayed, but they lost. Who's more powerful? None of your ancestors, none of your gods are more powerful than people who are inspired. People who got their backs against the wall and have no other choice but to conquer. People who have decided that they have manifest destiny. People who have decided that they have superiority. People whose will are stronger. What did Will Smith say? That I would die on a treadmill before I let the next guy beat me. 
people of that mindset will always win. Let I me mean, not say always. 99% of the time, we'll win. Our ancestors didn't win. The black ancestors didn't lose because of their of Jesus or their Orishas. They lost because one, they had they lacked the full understanding of what was going on. They first lacked the armament. Actually, they, the armament wouldn't have mattered. They had the numbers that we see with the Zulu wars. The Brits, they had all kinds of guns. The Zulus were kicking their ass. It's it's the it's a sheer willpower to win. To manifest, to have what you desire to have. That is the first thing that's more powerful. Now, we back that up with the higher vibrations. You see, the universe just gets in line to say yes to whatever it is that you are putting out. That's as simple as it is. And I can go on historically with a whole bunch of both sides where these people prayed to their God, and those people prayed to their God, and these people won. Or this person prayed to their God, and they, uh, I, I know I have a business friend. His business wasn't doing well. He got down on his knees inside of his shop. This is a story he told me. And he prayed. He said, God, if you make my business more prosperous, I will, I will tell everybody about you. Right? And then he kept working. You know, his wife divorced him. His kids abandoned him for a while. He, but he grinded out. He did better marketing. He, the, the franchise is only supposed to do certain things. But he went above and beyond. He highly decorated his shop. He made things that were like appealing to the eye. He social media marketed like a big dog. And he flourishes. Has the number one version of the franchise that he owns. Was it his God? Or did his prayer of desperation cause his mind to open to do more, be more, work harder, figure out different ways? That's what moved him. That's what moved him. That's what moves you. That's what will always move you. You have to recognize this. When you recognize that it is not the above that is moving you, but it is you that is moving the above, then all things that you desire to manifest will begin to manifest. But you got to put some work behind it. You can't get healthy through prayer and meditation. This is not going to work. You can't call on um, issue. When you're at the crossroads and think that he's going to come and somehow bump you into something. You want better health. Better get your ass out here and do some of these trails. Climb some of these. You see that hill? Climb that hill. You got to lift them weights. You got to eat better. You got to watch how you, who you're around. How much stress you're carrying. You want to do better in business? You got to manage your numbers. You got to manage your numbers. I didn't say manage your money. I said manage your numbers. You got to manage all your numbers. It's not just about how much money you take in, but how much money is going out. It's about how much money each square foot is making. It's about how much you're spending on marketing and what's the return on that investment. It's about how much you're paying your employees and what's the return on that investment. It's how well are you training your employees? How much time are you spending training them? How many hours do they get of training they to do their job properly? You got to watch the numbers of your taxation. You got to watch all your numbers. How much are you spending in supplies? Where can you save supplies if you buy in bulk? You got to watch all your numbers if you want to be successful in business. Then you got to watch your marketing. Are you connecting to your customer? Do you know who your customer is? Are you connecting with your customer? Are you building relationships with your customer? Are you giving a value add to your customers? Are you making yourself more valuable than the next guy to your customers? Are you doing that in order to build your business? Are you steadfast on meeting deadlines? Are you building your business credit? Are you building your personal credit? Are you getting yourself in a position so that when you have opportunities, you can take advantage of it? Too many people, and they, and they get on my nerves. I did a video a while back, and this guy had the nerve to come onto my in the comments and say that most black people just aren't lucky like you. Lucky my ass. Lucky my ass. There is no luck. There is only cause and effect that you can identify. Luck is what we call it when someone who is prepared for an opportunity gets the opportunity and takes advantage of it. You're not prepared for an opportunity, you're not going to take advantage of it, you're going to lose. There's no such thing as luck. So I'm telling you guys, you better recognize that it is so below as above. You are the one that affects everything. And you are the one that manifests. So y'all have a great day. Remember, you got to free yourself to be yourself. Because your greatness is not negotiable.
good vibrations, good journey.